I'm going to explain to you this evening what nanotechnology is. Nanotechnology is the science of small. It's the creation and application of materials, devices and systems which measure less than 100 nanometers in size. One nanometer is one billionth of a meter. This is approximately the width of three atoms. Nanotechnology could change the way everything is designed and manufactured. From industry to medicine. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the show. Um, now we're going to be discussing some of the uses of nanotechnology in modern society. For that purpose, I'm being joined by Professor Ignatius Dunn of the Nietzsche Institute of Advanced Nanotechnology. Good evening, Mr. Dunn. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be on your show, Mr. Mr. Uh, Rutter. Rutter. Wonderful name, sir. Well, I'd like to talk to you about the uses of nanotechnology, which we are developing in the Nietzsche Institute. For example, did you know that nanotechnology has been used today in industry, in the clothing industry, to make stain-resistant, spill-proof material, mm -hmm. such as khaki? These materials are treated with particles from a company called Nanotech, which are you know, on contract to the Leach Institute. And these particles attach to the cotton to create a waterproof barrier, which is extremely handy in situations like these. Uh, if you could roll it there, Ruth, please. I'm fire! Throw, 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 throw! Ah! Ah! Is it? Yeah. yeah. Carry on with the next question. Uh, I don't know the next question, I don't know the next question. And it is also used in medicine. Did you know that, Rutherford? Medicine is really excellent. What yes, yes. We exactly? in the Leash Institute are looking into designing chip cameras which are so small they can be swallowed like a pill. So that you can go in and examine the human body without any of those you know, in, in, invasive cameras, shall oh, we yes, say. You can't have that as well. Yeah, it's tall. So our scientists also say that they can create a nanomesh which will remove contaminants from the air and water, protecting us from anthrax and smallpox. Excellent. Yeah. And we can also, yes. we can create nanobots. Nanobots. I think you have a picture of a nanobot, do you not? Do we have, <laughs> yeah, do we have a picture? We do indeed. Come along, please. Uh, this is a nanobot. Would you care to talk us through it? A nanobot! <laughs> this is a nanobot, like the one we're building in next year. Oh, really? Intri intriguing. Uh, can we show, yes, we'll show that camera. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And what we intend to use these, these tiny machines is get them to travel around human blood vessels so that they will destroy cholesterol molecules in the blood vessel, thus preventing heart disease. Intriguing. We can use them to repair yeah, eardrum membranes. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for tragic road signs like the ones we see nowadays. Oh yes, I believe we've picked another picture of them. Clip there, Ruth, please. Thank you. You see, you see, it's necessary for society to themselves with these signs. It is. We can also use them to enter the blood vessels to repair bones and injuries much faster than the human body is capable, which is extremely useful in situations and extreme sports such as these. That's fine. <laughs> in extreme <laughs> situations such as these. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. Nanotechnology has many uses. What about molecularly engineering the sexual response? Mm -hmm. really? You could multiply climax by pi or even infinity. In fact, the, the implications of nanotechnology to manipulate the human body are boundless and you can change the human form in ways you never even thought possible. Yes, I think nanotechnology has a wonderful, wonderful future and we in the Least Institute strive to make that future present. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor. And we hope to see you again. Ready, girl. It was a pleasure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see each other again. Thank you very much. Please do come back. Peace. And we'll be back after these commercial breaks. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Hoffman. Uh, it's not Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're now going to be talking about the latest developments in nanotechnology, and for that purpose, I am being joined by Miss Brida Fitzpatrick of the Belfield IT Nanotechnology Research Group. Good evening, uh, Brida. Well, good night! Good night! Good evening. Well, that's a surprising. Heard about people like you. 
Welcome to the show. Now, I understand you're going to be talking about uh, the latest uh, developments in the field, in your field, which is nanotechnology. Yes, I intend to. Well, I think you'll find it quite interesting that many laboratories and institutes of higher technology all across the world are ongoing, doing ongoing research in nanotechnology, including five projects in Trinity College Dublin, right. and many more across Ireland looking into such technology as sensor technology, computer technology, and health-based initiatives. Mm. And they've already produced results. For example, do you know that one of these research companies has produced the so-called nanotubes? Have you heard of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Nanotubes were formed by rearranging the atoms of carbon molecules to produce something called nanotubes, which acts like metal, except it's four times lighter and a hundred times stronger than steel. Mm. <laughs> Intriguing. Ah, that covers many applications, I imagine. Many applications, including a space elevator. Space elevator. Mm. Mm. Okay, IBM have successfully rearranged atoms, silicon atoms, to spell out the acronym IBM. I believe you have a picture. Uh, we do indeed. Uh, can you show us the picture of Ruth? Oh, Ruth is gone. Um, Kathy, please. Uh, which is the first step towards rearranging atoms to build useful, practical nanos. That, that's, that's really very intriguing. Now, I'm sure this is a great topic. I'm sure we could talk about it all night long, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. So I'm going to have to say goodbye. Get away, Adam! <laughs> um, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, good night, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you uh, learned something from this. Um, please join us next week for our next topic, which uh, we'll, you'll find out next week.